Okay, so once again, good day everyone. So what I wanted to share today to you is what is TCP-IP. So TCP-IP stands for Transmission Control Protocol Internet Protocol. And it is a suite of communication protocols used to interconnect network devices on the internet. TCP IP is also used as a communication protocol in a private computer network, either an internet or extranet. The entire IP suite, as is a set of rules and procedures, is commonly referred to as TCP IP. TCP and IP are the two main protocols, though others are included in the suite. The TCP IP protocol suite functions as an abstraction layer between internet application and the routing and the switching fabric. The TCP IP specifies how data is exchanged over the internet by providing end-to-end -end communications that identify how it should be broken into packets, addressed, transmitted, routed, and received at the destination. TCP IP requires little central management and is designed to make networks reliable with the ability to recover automatically from the failure of any device on the network. The two main protocols in the IP suite serve these specific functions. TCP defines how application can create channels of communication across a network. It also manages how, ma how a message is assembled into smaller packets before they are done, before they are then transmitted over the internet and reassembled in the right order at the destination address. IP defines how to address and group each packet to make sure it reaches the right destination. It's a quick computer on the network check this IP address to determine where to forward the message. A subnet mask tells a computer or other network device what portions of the IP address is used to represent the network and what part is used to represent host or other computers on the network. NAT or network address translation is the virtualization of IP address. NAT helps improve security and decrease the number of IP addresses an organization needs. The common TCP IP protocols include the following Hypertext Transfer Protocol or HTTP. It handles the communication between a web server and a web browser. Another one is the HTTP secure. It handles secure communication between a web server and a web browser. And the last one is the file transfer protocol. It handles transmission of files between computer. How does TCP IP work? No. TCP IP uses the client server model. So of communication in which a user of machine or a client is provided a service, like sending a web page by another computer or a server in a network. Collectively, the TCP IP suite of protocols is classified as stateless, which means each client request is considered new, new because it is unrelated to previous requests. Being stateless frees up network paths so they can be used continuously. The transport layer itself, however, is stateful. It transmits a single message and its connection remains in place until all the packets in a message have been received and re reassembled at the destination. The TCP IP models differ slightly from the server layer operating systems interconnection the OSI networking model designated after it. The OSI reference model defines how application can communicate over a network. So why is TCP IP is important? Again, TCP IP is non-propriety and as a result, is not controlled by any single company. Therefore, the IP suite can be modified easily. It is compatible with all operating systems, so it can communicate with any other system. The IP suite is also compatible with all types of computer hardware and networks. 
PCPIP is highly scalable and as a routable protocol can determine the most efficient path through the network. It is widely used in current internet architecture. The four layers of the TCPIP model. TCPIP functionality is divided into four layers, each of which include specific protocols, the application layers. It provides application with standardized data exchange. Its protocols include HTTP, FTP, Post Office Protocol 3, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, and Simple Network Management Protocol. At the application layer, the payload is the actual application data. The next one, of course, is the transport layer. It is responsible for maintaining end-to-end -end communication across the network. PCP handles communication between hosts and provides flow control, multiplexing, and reliability. The transport protocol include TCP and user datagram protocol, which is sometimes used instead of TCP for special purposes. Number three is the network layer, also called the internet layer. It deals with packets and connects independent network to transport the packets across network boundaries. The network layer protocols and operate, of course, the network layer protocols are IP and internet control message protocol, which is used for error reporting. And the other one is the physical layer. It is also known as the network interface layer or data link layer. It consists of protocols that operate only on a link, the network component that interconnects nodes or hosts into the network. The protocols in this lowest layer include Ethernet for local area networks and address resolution <coughs> protocol. The uses of TCP IP. TCP IP can be used to provide remote login over the network for interactive file transfer to deliver email, to deliver web pages over the network, and to remotely access a server host file system. Most broadly, it is used to represent how information changes form as it travels over a network from the concrete physical layer to the abstract application layer. It details the basic protocols or methods of communication at each layer as information passes through. The pros and cons of TCP IP. The advantage of using the TCP IP model include the following. It helps establish a connection between different types of computers. It works independently of the operating system. It supports many routing protocols. It uses client-server architecture that is highly scalable. It can be operated independently. It supports several routing protocols and it is lightweight and doesn't place a necessary strain on a network or computer. How about the cons of TCP IP? Of course, it is complicated to set up and manage. The transport layer does not guarantee deliver of packets. It is not easy to replace protocols in TCP IP. It does not clearly separate the concept of services, interfaces, and protocols. So it is not suitable for describing new technologies in new networks and especially vulnerable to a synchronization attack, which is a type of denial of service attack in which a bad actor uses TCP IP. How are TCP IP and IP different? No? So there are numerous differences between TCP IP and IP. For example, IP is a low level internet protocol that facilitates data communications over the internet. Its purpose is to deliver packets of data that consists of a header, which contains routing information, such as source and destination of the data and the data payload itself. IP is limited by the amount of data that it can send because the maximum size of a single IP data packet, which contains both the header and the data, is just only between 20 and 24 bytes long. 
This means that longer strings of data must be broken into multiple data packets that must be independently sent and then recognized into the correct order after they are sent. Since IPS is strictly a data send receive protocol, there is no built-in checking that verify, verifies when the data packets sent were actually received. In the, on the other hand, uh, TCP IP is a higher level smart communication protocol that can do more things. TCP IP still uses IP as a means of transporting data packets, but it also connects computers, applications, web pages, and web servers. TCP understands holistically the entire streams of data that these assets require in order to operate, and it makes sure the entire volume of data needed is sent the first time. TCP also runs checks that ensure the data is delivered. As it, do, as it does, it works. TCP can also control the size and flow rate of data. And it ensures that the networks are free of any congestion that could block the receipt of the, receipt of the data. An example is an application that wants to send a large amount of data over the internet. If the application only use IP, the data would have to be broken into multiple IP packets. This would require multiple requests to send and receive data. And since IP address or IP requests are issued per packet, with TCP IP, only a single request to send an entire data stream is needed. TCP handles the rest. Unlike IP, TCP can detect problems that arise in IP and request retransmission of any data packets that were lost. TCP can also recognize packets so they get transmitted in the proper order and it can minimize network congestion. TCP IP makes data transfer over the internet easier. The TCP IP model versus OSI model. TCP IP and OSI are the most widely used communication networking protocols. The main difference is that OSI is conceptual model what is not practically used for communication. Rather, it defines how application can communicate over a network. TCP IP, on the other hand, is widely used to establish links and network interaction. The TCP IP protocols lay out the standards on which the internet was created, while the OSI model provides guidelines on how communication has to be done. Therefore, TCP IP is a more practical model. Now, the TCP IP in OSI model have similarities and differences. The main similarity is the way they are constructed as both user layers, although TCP IP consists of just four layers, while the OSI Again, TCP IP and OSI models have similarities and differences. The main similarity is the way they are constructed as both use layers, although TCP IP consists of just four layers, while the OSI model consists of the following seven layers. Number one, the application layer. layer, seven, layer that is layer seven. That is for OSI model. So layer six, that is presentation layer. Five, a session layer, and four is the transport layer. Three is the network layer, which moves data into and through other networks. Layer two, the data link layer, handles problems to occur as a result of, the, of bit transmission errors. And layer one, the physical layer, transport data using electrical, mechanical, or procedural interfaces. The upper layer of both the TCP IP model and the OSI model is the application layer, although this layer performs the same link or task in each model, and those tasks may vary depending on the data it's received. 
So the functions performed in each model are also similar because it uses a network layer and transport layer to operate. The TCP IP and OSI models are each mostly used to transmit data packets, although they will do so by different means and by different paths. They will still reach their destination. The similarities between the TCP IP model and the OSI models include the following. Okay, so they are both logical uh, models, define networking standards, network communication paths and layers, provide frameworks for creating and implementing network standards and devices, and enabled one manufacturer to make devices and network components that can coexist and work with the devices and components made by other manufacturers. The difference between TCP IP model and the OSI model also include TCP IP uses just one layer. Uh, TCP IP uses one layer for physical to define the functionalities of the bottom layers and others. Now, the history of TCP IP. The Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, the research branch of the US Department of Defense created the, D, the TCP IP model in the 1970s for use in ARPANET, a wide area network that preceded the internet. The TCP IP was originally designed for the Unix OS and it has been built into all of the OSs that came after it. So the TCP IP model and its related protocols are now maintained by the Internet Engineering Task Force. So this will be my references, or my reference rather. Thank you and God bless everyone. Enjoy learning. Godspeed.